in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn and I'm joined once again by illustrator and artist from Sydney, Jeremy Lord. What's up, Jeremy? How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you guys going? I'm good. Um, hello, chat as well. We are live today. So if you have any questions as we're rolling along, we also love to uh, hear, you know, what you're up to, what you're doing, uh, who's there out there in chat land um, and interact with us as we're going along. Otherwise, you will just get my mindless yammering as we, as Jeremy <laughs> creates amazing work uh, and we just kind of hang out and have a good time. But we'd love to hear from you. So shout out in chat if you are watching. Um, so this is part two in a two-part series. So we'll be finishing up today. Uh, we'll probably start with a bit of a recap of what we did yesterday. Um, and it's been a lot of fun, a little bit of Firefly kind of as a co-pilot. Um, I heard someone use that term the other day and I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool, a little co-pilot, a little bit of a help along the creative, uh, the creative way. Um, and, uh, and of course, lots of uh, traditional skills and digital skills from Jeremy and uh, learned quite a lot along the way. Um, but yeah, should we jump in, maybe do a bit of a recap, Jeremy, you want to start there? Yep. Let's do that. All right. Um, so the, the, the theme of this kind of two episode stream is kind of using AI, um, generated artwork in a slightly different way to just kind of a, a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Right. It's yeah. like generate the artwork, use it to then actually create artwork yourself. Um, rather than just generate artwork. It's like, bang, cool, I've made artwork. Um, so we jumped into Firefly um, and had a few different kind of, you know, messed around with a few different prompts. Um, I've closed some of the windows there, but we we tried kind of like tigers in, in hot tubs eating ramen. We, we kind of messed around to see, you know, what this would spit out for us. And I think that's the kind of the point here is not to be too restrictive, be a little bit more like liberal with your approach of like what you're going to input into this um, and seeing what it spits out and kind of taking ideas from that um, so we had kind of like tigers and hoodies always always kind of setting this theme of like a tiger um, and we kind of had like you know tiger riding bike and um, that kind of stuff and then we settled on this one here the the top right one as a, as a kind of a a cool one to work from uh, and to take inspiration from this pose. Now, there's there's a few things that we pointed out in here that are kind of weird and, and happening that that could or couldn't lead to different ideas, which is I think the, the kind of the, the beauty of this is like this one here, we're having a bit of a laugh of like this guy looks like he's really struggling on his bike because his tires are made of fur as well. So obviously the, the AI engine has gone like it's a tiger, it's a bike that bike it's a tiger be bike. made of more. Yeah, it's, it's more it's, it's more tiger on the bike. Yeah. Um, and it's given him furry wheels. So, um, you know, like stuff like that, that could be like, hey, all right, maybe, maybe instead of like the, the hair, maybe it's like spiky bike and he's like a super cyberpunk, you know, bad guy and he's going to have like nails on his bike or whatever. So we kind of played around with that. Um, and then we had a little bit of a hint of like what could go into the backgrounds and messing around with like a cyberpunk bar exterior uh, and potentially kind of coming up with things that maybe we hadn't, thought or wouldn't think of on our on our own and sort of like challenging our own kind of ideas um so we then jumped into photoshop and started doing some sketches based on um this particular set of inspiration so we talked about inspiration versus reference i'll talk about that again today um but yeah so we ended up here yesterday with this kind of like cyberpunk um, a little bit overweight kind of tiger just to kind of make it a bit easier to draw a little bit kind of um, more weight to him uh, and sitting on this bike so he's you know he's he's a he's a big guy but he's also got all this kind of like cyberpunk stuff and he looks real like mean and lean but then he's also got this weird kind of bike so since yesterday i've kind of then gone in and started working with some more reference material and trying to get that aspect of like the ridiculousness of a super mean looking cyberpunk tiger on a bicycle yes. um and so i've gone in and kind of changed it to him yeah. riding a trike that's even more kind of childish a little yeah. bit more kind it's of even cute. more ridiculous right especially is, with the attitude yeah. on his face exactly yep yeah. um but also i think talking about this so like looking at references of of different kind of trikes right mm -hmm. so looking online images of trikes 
Um, just so happened that I was lucky and found ones that were from a similar angle um, to work from. And then also referencing this um, image from Akira, mm. from the anime, where you've got this, like the main character here, Kaneda, kind of, well, not necessarily the main character, but sitting on his bike with his kind of legs straight out and his hand dangling. And so I kind of wanted to reference that, you know, cyberpunk Akira is kind of like the the yardstick of all things cyberpunk. So definitely trying to get that kind of reference in there and we can kind of get that reference in in the color as well. So in, in this um, in this folder here, like I've got the inspiration for the image and I've kind of used in the original sketch this pose as a reference. But now this is kind of swapped back to just more kind of inspiration for a piece that I can then use reference to get the things to look like they're supposed to look to let people know what they're you know looking at. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, because bikes and bicycle wheels can be really tricky to draw, I've I've done this thing which like you know there's there's always this debate about like tracing and, and whether or not it's it's okay to do it. Um, I think, you know, you can give yourself a break when you've got something that's very intricate and difficult to draw like a bicycle wheel. Mm. I, I think that can be fine for you to just go like, look, I'm just going to take it, put it into size, and then I'm just going to trace it. Um, right. And that's going to save me a little bit of time. The rest of the artwork's going to have a whole heap of creation that is yours and that is created by you. Um, so I think, you know, like I would be on the side of like, yeah, that's okay to, to do that. It's still kind of a legit artwork and I'm still a legit artist. Um, some people might disagree with that. Uh, that's okay. Like I'm, I'm, I'm okay with doing it. So that's what we're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, surely something like tread or grass or clouds, like yeah. kind of gets to it. Like I get it if it was, I get it if you screenshot Akira and then traced even Akira. Like, I almost feel like, although someone wouldn't ever be able to prove that, oh, that's the tread from Akira. Like, like maybe that even cause it's, you're tracing an artist or something, but it's actually like a photo of a wheel. Um, yeah. Anyway, not, not, I probably wouldn't even have a problem tracing like something like that from a drawing, well, look, I, but yeah, like, you know. I think like overall you, you learn a lot from tracing as well. Like you learn certain gestures. It can, it can yeah. be helpful for even just learning, but in certain cases, it's just like, it's fine. Just do it. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so we've ended up with this guy here. We've got it. We've got the sketch and then we've kind of cleaned up the artwork a little bit just to get that extra detail in there. Um, and so we're basically where we were yesterday, just with a different pose and a different kind of reference in the artwork. Uh, and now we're going to start thinking about adding in some kind of background elements to this. So we're going to go back to our inspiration and we're going to go back into Firefox. Uh, Firefly, sorry, I mean, I'm <laughs> browsing it in Firefox and I'm using Firefly. Excuse the, the little mishap, but we've got a few different kind of ideas here that we could use um, for kind of background elements potentially. Um, so jumping back into Photoshop, we're going to start with a new layer and we're going to call this one background. I just use shorthand BKG just because who can be bothered to write that super long word that is background. <laughs> um, and I'm going to kind of frame him with some smoke. So we're going to start by kind of putting in a little bit of smoke in here. Um, we need a, a ground, like a ground level to kind of make sure that he looks like he's kind of sitting on a thing. Um, probably good to have that all kind of line up properly. Uh, and then some smoke to basically kind of like take up this section and maybe this section. So we've got a little bit of a kind of a frame in terms of composition. So I'm just gonna kind of loosely throw in some smoke in here that doesn't have to be necessarily coming from anywhere. It's just like atmospheric kind right. of smoke. So it's not like mm. smoke coming out of the wheels or not trying to indicate. No. Nah. It's just something happen in the background like you're at, at night and it's the heat coming out of the sewer Could or heat stack or something like it happens in new york yeah yeah exactly um so i'm i've literally done this like very very loosely um a little tip actually if you're into kind of if you've got a brief and you kind of have to draw smoke a, a lot 
and, and you're not sure how to go about it, how to get the volumes of it and so on and so forth. Um, a good tip is to just draw a bunch of circles, like draw a bunch of spheres that are kind of touching um, and just kind of put them in like that. And then you can kind of go around the top and this is going to give you this kind of like cloud effect that you might kind of need or look for that you can start to kind of think about, you know, how is this all kind of working together? How is it all kind of billowing and so on and so forth? Um, so that you can get kind of shading happening where you need the shading to happen and so on. So these are just basically kind of big, you know, spherical volumes that can happen with smoke. So that's just a, a little kind of you know simpler way to to draw the smoke nice. if you're kind of struggling with that um, and then we'll add in some kind of a few little more shapes happening in here and uh, maybe some stuff on the floor just you know general city debris kind of stuff um, oh, yeah. just to give it a little bit of life a little bit of kind of reality um, maybe a puddle so that that puddle is going to allow us to kind of reflect some of the lights that we might put into it. Some That's of the neons. exactly what I was thinking. It's like the yeah. you know, and it's interesting because something that um, AI seems to do quite well is reflections. I remember we were talking about it when it yeah. first came out, right? Like we were talking about doing an isometric stream, and yeah, I mean you can see it in here. But, yeah. and, but if you really think about it, like it it's producing light, and it's doing quite a good job of that light coming out of the inside of the. I'm yep. looking at the top right one of the inside of the bar, but it also <laughs> understands like where the shadow is, where the primary light source is, which is this like sunset. Um, yep. And it's reflecting like kind of water back at you, which is it's pretty crazy when you think about it. Yeah, it is. It's like, it's it's one of those things. It's like, wow, okay. It's, it it's does that light really down. well, right? Like, yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like, okay, it gets that like tick. Yeah. Um, Cool. So we're, we're getting like, I might even just put like lines on the road, maybe like a double kind of line. So just give it the sense that he, like, he, he is on the road. Um, bit more smoke in the foreground. Cool. So we got some background elements. Um, let's throw in maybe a few kind of buildings. So we got some um, on our inspiration here. We've got this kind of building in the back here. Got some hints of like neon signs over on this one um that could be kind of interesting to look at so we're we're going to keep it pretty loose um i don't want to get into drawing an entire cityscape here because like that's going to take a really long time um but just getting a sense of like yeah where where things could be um maybe i might jump back into this guy and grab um maybe this section of my image here because there's something kind of cool happening with this one and drop that in here and see how that kind of like i might even just kind of scale it to yeah. like put it to scale and see how that might kind of compose in the image there and if that's going to work um and i'm uh, i'm not hating it i think it look, looks kind of interesting um, so I'm going to go ahead and reference some of this material in here straight up. Again, kind of like tracing, um, but working to something a little bit more kind of loose, trying to get sort of a sense of what could be happening in this image. Um, and again, like using this as reference but also kind of inspiration a little bit of both mm. and then like seeing what once that's kind of set once those shapes are like kind of locked in seeing how i can then come in with my own ideas and kind of edit that and and kind of tweak it to make it a little bit more my own right um, and so i'm moving the other side over to here and kind of dragging that there popping in some like little weird random like mechanic things we've got a big kind of sign here that could be cool that could be like a street sign like a traffic light so yeah. get that sense again that he's kind of sitting somewhere kind of on a road lots and lots of cables it's cyberpunk cables everywhere things happening electricity 
kind of grunginess going on. Um, and yeah, that's not too bad. Nice. Um, good to have a main light source as well on some of these um, that we can kind of get some basic kind of building shapes in the background here that are just going to be silhouettes essentially um nothing too crazy or fancy but just yeah getting a little bit of a sense of stuff happening yeah make sure the perspective is working as well it's always really important when you're doing um these kind of cityscape things if it doesn't fit in perspective, you're going to be in trouble further on down. Any tips on on perspective? Because you kind of used an image for reference from something you drew. Yeah. The perspective wasn't going to was never going to be exactly the same. And then for there, you just kind of made some tweaks. So I don't know. What are you looking for there? You, you don't have a vanishing point. You're not using a grid. So is it just all kind of in your head, or what's the process? a little bit? Yeah, I think that's probably just like. I'm probably showing a, an example of kind of what not to do if you're um, sort of like beginnerish with perspective. Um, it's definitely one of those things that comes with experience of like, you know, if it feels right, if it looks like it's straight or if it's not, then you'll be okay. Um, there's probably something happening over here that I should fix. Um, and that's an easy fix with Photoshop as well, where I can just go in and fix the perspective so like make that a little bit more in perspective there so it's kind of feeling a little bit more like a straight up street um that's working a little bit better but essentially the 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 theory behind any kind of perspective is you have a vanishing point um and that vanishing point lives on a horizon line and all the lines go to that vanishing point and so if you're drawing in buildings we're going to start seeing this kind of thing where all those lines are kind of going to meet down at that point. Um, any window is going to be the same kind of thing. So uh, this is like, you know, very, very basic drawing kind of theory, drawing and perspective. But in terms of tips, there's there's not really much I can say rather than other than just kind of, yeah, just practice, 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 practice. things. Yeah, to be able to do yeah. it quickly without a grid and accurately. It's a And then it is, yeah, it just becomes like a, like you, you could just, feel it out right you yeah. can just go like hey that doesn't look right and if it doesn't look right it's probably because it isn't um and so yeah just need to kind of change it a little bit cool. um cool so i'm kind of digging all of that we're being really loose we're like leaving a lot of stuff undefined like there's a lot of stuff in here that's just kind of like what is it i don't know but it's just stuff um and we're just going to leave it in and see how that kind of plays and um, and because we're probably going to blur it out and because we're going to just draw it very basically it probably doesn't matter too much to be honest yeah it's a bit like when you sort of i notice i read a lot of comics like digital comics and you see the background characters or certain frames uh clearly intention like intentionally done i don't know if quickly is the right word but it's kind of lo-fi in terms of drawing yeah or like if there's people in the, the background, I mean, especially if they're like, oh no, there's this Ultron army and there's 10,000 of them. They're not drawing every single helmet of it. And it's not the nah. focus anyway. So you can still tell the story, but in the background, it's just maybe a hundred figures, but then it slowly like fades and they get blurry. And I'm sure there's a lot of cop copying and pasting and moving around and stuff there. Um, Cause you don't need it to kind of tell the whole story and it's not the focus, right? Yeah, and that's exactly right. It's it's not like it's it's funny actually because as an artist, you will kind of you'll draw this in and be like, no, people will see it. It's like nobody will see it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Chances are, nobody will notice that the guy in the background of this giant Lord of the Rings battle is running funny or doesn't have a helmet or like right. doesn't have a face. It's fine. It's cool. Like it, that that's not its job. Like there's a thing with like. Um, I don't know if you ever watched that show Extras. The, the I Ricky did, Gervais yeah, Ricky show. Gervais one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Um, so I did a little bit of Extras work um, just for just for a laugh back in the day. Um, and one of the things that you kind of have to do as an extra is literally just be nobody. 
Mm. You have to just like no beard, no nothing. They always shave you when you're going to be an Do actor they? because, yep, you can't you can't be noticed. You just you just texture in the background, and, right. and I think that's the thing with with what we're talking about is just it's it's fine. It's just it's just texture in the background. Like you don't need to define all those things. Like um you, like we get what it's supposed to look like now obviously this is fine for like concept art and, and whatnot but if you're doing something a little bit more involved then you're probably going to need to put that detail in there mm. but yeah for, for things like that it's like I, I think it's totally fine to just leave it as is yeah 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 I go back to the comic analogy like the front cover is always going to be highly detailed for everything attention to detail right I mean, it's usually yep. another artist anyway, but, um, but yeah, you're like 40 pages in and there's like, you know, 60 frames or something on there and you, you know, they, people are looking at it for like half a second to kind of get an idea of what is happening. Um, yeah. That's it. Time and That's place, it. I guess. It's, it's just like, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So we're getting a, a hint of kind of like lighting in here, like what time of day it might be and how it kind of might work so starting with the background first starting with this kind of sense of um like the lighting in the actual city and, and getting that in there and then we're going to work um work from the back to the front essentially mm. and, and did you just I'm put a flat color in there like a Yep. So I've got a flat and color a and then a gradient on top. Um, I like to keep the gradient on top just so that I can go like, actually, I want to see what it looks like if it's a slightly warmer or slightly more kind of like whatever. Um, so that's just going to help me a little bit later on. And I'm eye dropping colors from this um, piece that we just kind of pulled out. Um, so now I'm going to swap Again, it's to... a good strength, right, of, of AI. It's like, oh, cool. Here's a color palette to work from. Yep, 100%. Um, so cool. So now we're going to work to this kind of building here. And I'm just using the polygon lasso tool just to get a sense of like really just basic whatever, right? I'm, I'm like, I'm not paying a heap of attention to what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just messing around with just kind of background shapes that can work into this image that I'm trying to build here. Lots of antennas on stuff. Um, and this is probably just more down to, there's probably going to be too many antennas. Um, but so like, Can't you know, visual, <laughs> um, a visual kind of library of like all things kind of cyberpunk and how that can work and like what what is like, how can you quickly kind of generate something that's going to feel right to what you're doing? Um, there we go, fill that in. It looks a bit funny, but that doesn't matter. Again, this is just gonna be like for us to stick it in the background um, to get a sense of kind of depth as well. So generally speaking, and you can see it here from the AI, what it's done is like the stuff in the background that's further away, we get what's called kind of atmospheric perspective or atmospheric depth where you get this like as you look at mountains like if you're seeing like a range of mountains that are one behind the other on like a, any kind of like sunny day even the ones further away are going to be more faded they're going to be behind more air more atmosphere so they'll there's going to be more stuff to look through to see them so generally they're going to be lighter or, or more faded the stuff that's in the foreground is darker um so that's a, always a really good way to kind of operate when you're doing something like this is take this particular color and we're going to start and go in with kind of like, let's say, um, I'm going to go with back and then I'm going to duplicate this and clear it and go to, uh, it could go mid, could go front, could go a range of different things. And I'm going to eye drop a different kind of like darker color and do these buildings in the front here again. And I didn't do them darker. That's okay. I can do uh, this and darken them just live using the HUSAT kind of tool. That's good. And then I'm kind of probably going to want an even darker color. 
whoops, I don't know why it's made a group here. Probably because I told it to. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of the spinning wheels of um, naming layers as well, just for the sake of kind of speed here. Sure. Um, but yeah, naming layers is, is still an important thing to do, but just for the sake of kind of having something relatively quick on the page. I know we always say name layers, but I feel like everybody like off, off camera is like, oh man, just perpetuating the lie that they like actually oh. name layers. <laughs> Yep. I know you yeah. do with some of yours, like you're like Cole, like you have this shorthand and you're like, I do need that because I end up with lots of layers, but I don't know. Yeah. I like it's just The like... reality is like, if if I'm good, I'll do them. If I'm yeah. most of the time, I probably won't end up <laughs> doing that, but whatever. Do what I say, not what I do. Yeah. Um. Okay, so we're pretty good at this stage we've got a relatively good sense of depth it's kind of probably hard to see at this stage mostly because um we haven't kind of put the main protagonist in there and it's it's looking a little bit kind of funky but if you kind of see that immediately like you're getting a sense of like what stuff is in front and what stuff is behind yeah um in order to even kind of increase that a little bit we can take this gradient that we created and duplicate him to be in between each one of these layers and kind of start to drop okay. that down a little bit and then the one in the background can be dropped down again so that this is like there's light coming in from behind like the streets and in between kind of these buildings there's more light there's more streets there's more life um so that's always going to be really kind of a, a good way to to operate that's awesome. Uh, I finding um, I found this a couple of times. I find parallels between yourself and your practice in Photoshop and uh, Ramesh Hari Krishna Sami, who does um, photo right. manipulation. He did the same thing. Maybe I'm just picking it up because I saw it before. But he did this, he did the same thing before um, with light, with color, to try to give depth to a character that was standing in a field. So he had an in in front gradient that was like had adjustments to it and everything did another one behind and then had the girl again and it just gave a bit more of a 3d kind of effect to kind of pop that character yeah. out to make it look a bit more natural um this is a slightly different purpose of doing it this way but it's an interesting it's a similar effect it's to give that depth um because you're just putting a flat gradient in because of the transparency and there's objects between you're adding these like physical kind of layers to it yeah that's it and it's like uh, this i didn't invent this you know like uh, this is not like, yeah yeah i'm not saying yeah but it's a it's, it's a pretty like standard thing to do but yeah, it, yeah it's super it's like a really easy one to to like master yeah. um and the the impact that it will have on your like artwork if you're kind of doing landscapey stuff or cityscape stuff is is huge like you'll instantly get this sense of like okay stuff's happening in here it's like it's like a video games, you know, like you're trying to like build a world around something um, and trying to get that sense of like these there's things happening in the city when you're not in it. Right. Um, yep. And I think it's, it's basically kind of trying to do the same thing with this and trying to just get this sense of like life happening in the city, whether or not you're in it. Um, Cool. So we've we've built our like very kind of loose background. Now we can think about dropping in color on the main character. So sometimes I'll have a color already kind of in my brain of what I'm what I'm trying to do. Um, other times I'm just like I'm going for a vibe and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just going to try different things and see what happens. Um, this is one of those days. Mm. So I'm going to come in with a color. Um, I'm just going to make it orange-ish because we're using a tiger, but it's probably not going to stay that way. Um, although orange is going to be not bad if we've got a predominance of blue in here. Orange and blue are complementary colors. And so our character will stand out really easily. But again, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. I'd be very surprised if I keep that color in there. Right. Um, so just like, this is just me 
my own kind of personal technique. What I will do when I'm kind of doing a really quick rough fill like this is I will go around the outline of the shape with this kind of relatively thick brush. And then once that's done, just to save on like filling time, um, I'll go in with a lasso tool and kind of fill it all out. Right. Nice and fast and make sure that I'm not leaving any kind of like specks of unfilled work. Are you, are you just being super accurate with this or is this clipped in a way that you can't go outside of that line? Uh, no, I can go outside of the line. It's just because I'm using kind of relatively thicker art line work. Yep. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a margin for error. Right. Uh, and so it's, it looks like it's kind of me being super precise, but it's not. So now I'm, I've got basically done the same thing again here with this orange thick line work is now my lasso tool line can be whatever. I can just kind of really quickly go around and kind of block out that selection and then option delete to fill that out. Nice. Um, and immediately you can see the volume of the city behind it. Like all of a sudden now that it's not see-through anymore and he's hiding all the bits that I didn't put in, like all the weird stuff that I didn't fill out and everything now is being hidden. So everything kind of makes a little bit more sense again. Yeah. Um, so uh, I like that orange this. too. It's coming through really nice on yeah. the screen. Um, but again, super important to think about you know obviously this guy needs to look like he is in this setting right so we need to make sure that the light that's happening in the world is also kind of looking like it's impacting him um so that orange is probably not going to be able to stay or at least not as is because there's no orange light happening around here um, and to try and get some of these highlights, like what's really cool with these artworks and it's something that I always really like to do when I'm working on, on any kind of like color scheme here is to get these kind of like rim lights or bounce lights mm -hmm. happening, these kind of neon like hookups on, on this work. Um, and you can see what they've done here is like, um, I say they, <laughs> what they, they has done picked here. that up too. The robots. <laughs> our, our, mach our machine overlords have created this work. Um, using orange for the suit over here but then to get this bounce light this section over here is going back to blue right so then we get to see that because if that blue was hitting the orange it would be a mess so potentially something to kind of be mindful of when you're kind of doing this um to think about like okay how's this going to work how do i get the the coloring to feel like it kind of matches this um and so what i will tend to do oops and i haven't done the flag excuse me um, also a good idea to save every now and then <laughs> we were talking about this yesterday the little like triangle flag that's like rides at the top at the back of a bike probably yeah. like a goonies reference kind of yeah. also makes just makes it feel a little bit more childish like he thinks he's he's hot stuff, but he's just riding a trike and he's got yeah. a weird like little child's bike. Yeah. Um nice juxtaposition of the two. So now is when I can start to go, all right, how's this gonna work? Like how am I gonna get him feeling like he's blended into the environment a little bit more? Um and it gets a little bit kind of crazy. But I'm gonna try and I wanna get that that red of that like of Canada's bike from Akira because that's what I'm referencing so I'm going to go with a red potentially and, and see how that goes because that's the only color at this stage on this character that I know I have to reference because that bike is so famous from that movie mm. if I make it any other color the reference won't stick right it, it, like it won't right. land so I, I need to work from all right well that color can't be any other color so you're just gonna have to work with that once i've done that now that i've kind of gotten a main kind of base color for this there's a bunch of different ways that you can try and work with this to try and fill in colors very quickly um if you're pretty comfortable with what colors you're going to put in i could 
just lock the transparency on this layer, right? So this little kind of chess board up here, that is gonna lock transparency. And that's gonna mean that, for instance, what you were asking me just a second ago, like, have you got it on a, on a lock or something? If I paint with a yellow in here, but if I go outside the line work, it's those pixels are locked. So the transparency, every transparent pixel on that layer is locked, there are no go zone. Right. So I could potentially come in and go like, all right, the head's going to be yellow and try and fill that in. I'll still have to be careful on the inside of that artwork to try and make sure that, you know, I'm not kind of bleeding over. Yeah. Um, so I could do it that way. Or if you're kind of trying to get more layers happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. So I can command click on the layer thumbnail and that's going to select everything Thing that's not transparent in this layer and i'm going to go to my layer here my group in which i've got so far just this one layer but theoretically i've had more layers adding into this and i'm just going to make a layer mask and uh what have you done to me um uh, what have you done ah because my background is also in that group um so that's why it's blocked that up. So now basically it doesn't matter what I do to any of these other layers. I can make a new layer and paint out here and it's going to have the same visual feel. It's just blocking that layer out. So it just means that I've done the hard work now of blocking out that layer and I've saved that on a layer mask so that every other layer I won't have to work well, as Every other layer below that, right? Like everything below exactly. that one. So you can just start a new layer and call it head or fur totally. or skin or something or and it could be suit or bike or and that's how that's a different way to do it if you didn't want to draw on the same layer using the locked pixels exactly. technique right yeah um, and it just means that you've got access to more possible edits and changes with your layers um, and that's just going to work a little bit kind of potentially going to be a little bit more friendly for working on a client brief where they're likely to want to do changes. Yeah. Um, that's going to help you out quite a bit, but I've, I've done both when there are times when I'm just kind of like, yes, I know exactly what colors I'm going to do here. I don't want to be bothered with making new layers. It weighs down my file and, um, it, it means I have to name them as well, which I don't like to do. Um, so I'll, I'll potentially just kind of work to something a little bit more like this. Um, important as well at this stage to let's identify a light source. I'm going to come in here and you can see how quickly this can start to get a little bit messy. Um, I'm going to come in here and give myself some like neons that are going to work. Uh, and sometimes I like to work with one light source, other times I like to work with two. So I'm going to come in here with this kind of like hot pink, pink and blue, cyberpunk, neon, 80s colors, always a winner. Um, so I'm going to work to a neon sign over here, potentially. And let's put this sketch line back up. So we're going to have a neon sign over here. And then we can just like do whatever in here. It doesn't really matter. That looks um, cool. I like that. Very neony. Neony. Just coining terms. Just make some like space writing. Cool. Um, so that's going to be a pretty strong light source for us and um, potentially have another one over here that can also be pink probably want a slightly different kind of tone and um, we'll blast a outer glow onto this give it that nice kind of neon -y vibe and make sure that we're working to the same tone to opaque um, good size spread. No, drop that down. All right. And give it an inner glow of a kind of a white ish. 
bit big. There we go. And that's pretty good. So what that does immediately is it allows me to go, okay, this guy has a um, kind of overall light source that's going to work from it and potentially going to have another one back behind. Um, so we're going to do make a new layer over here and go with a kind of a blue that'll do and put some kind of like neon -y stuff happening over here and more up here again like i'd probably spend a heap more time working on this and trying to you know get different ideas happening but just to kind of quickly show you how this is then going to impact stuff it's going to allow me to put some highlights into this. So on one hand, I will have the, um, let me hide this for now so I can eye drop the right color. On one hand, I'm going to have a bounce light happening from this end. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to mean I've got highlights happening all the way through on this side of the character so this whole kind of thing here is is reflecting the the light coming from um sorry coming from here so all of this is throwing light yeah. all down this side right so all of my things that are kind of facing that way will catch that light Because it's gonna, nighttime, gonna, right? I mean, like a neon light is not going to give much, like always, um, always, like light, and it's not going to be very colorful as it would during the day for obvious reasons. It's going to be completely drowned out by, like if it's an overcast day, everything's going to be flat, right? Or there's a giant yeah. ball in the sky, then that's just this hard yellow light. Whereas because it's nighttime, it's really dark. It's a foggy kind of city as well. You're kind of getting that, like a little bit of mist and fog and it's not a very clean city cyberpunk usually a bit dirty right like a little bit mm -hmm. a little bit of gas and soot and grime everywhere and so you're going to get that like the ne and simple neon light is going to give you a lot of light um that's exactly right it's almost like i've done streams with you before <laughs> i know i we should do a stream where we turn your mic off and i just explain what you do and i'm like <laughs> okay so just imagine that you turn that snow was falling but the snow was light yep <laughs> yep yep <laughs> i know that one i've got that committed um, up here yep <laughs> i can't do um, it so cool. i could i could narrate <laughs> Um, so what you said is is exactly right, right? So this is where the color of this guy's gonna have to change because the pink on that kind of red is is no bueno. It just it don't work. It's no good. I need like in fact, if I show you like I'm gonna drop the darkness on this, all of a sudden that light pops way more, yeah. right? Because you need the darkness to have that neon kind of showcase. If it's a super bright color, it's just like I, I don't see it. it. It's not having the effect that I want. So I'm going to need that kind of darkness in there to, to work from something that I can kind of work to, right? Um, so what I will actually do in certain cases, if I'm really like stuck on this color uh, and I really want to work to that, is I'll create this kind of like off-screen light source. Uh, and what I mean by that is this. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to, uh, I might actually just take this and pop it up there. We can get rid of these guys real quick. Um, and go. And I'm gonna put a adjustment layer on top. So all the, the hue sat stuff that I've done so far is basically just is what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna drop the darkness down of that make sure that it's linking to the group underneath it please do what i tell you to do come on okay interesting it's not cooperating with me right now um hmm. you sat bang okay cool that's it um so just making that whole thing darker 
but trying to make it so that this light source is there's going to be something kind of happening over on the other side so this is what it's going to look like right i'm going to block out a more sort of natural light happening on the flip side of that so this is what we call like a bounce light zero one end and the other end so we're getting kind of full volume um potential kind of happening here and again i'm doing this really really roughly um, but you kind of get the idea where there's a kind of a not necessarily full colored light source coming from the opposite direction um, and that can come from just off camera like yeah it doesn't yeah. like it doesn't have to be a real thing right and it also what that does in a sense is it also allows me to kind of tell people that there is stuff happening it's outside more, of what you see right from a storytelling kind of perspective there's something over there yeah. it could be a could be a buddy or an enemy or you know some other character that's got their light facing coming from yep, the side exactly. or it could be taco shop like it could literally be anything yeah taco shop yeah. Well, that would explain neon taco shop. a lot about this character it maybe. might have been part of the assumed diet um yeah it's possible that might have been where i got the idea from maybe i'm just hungry for tacos it could be as simple as that when would you not be long time since i've had tacos um cool so that then see like immediately that makes the the color hasn't mm. changed but the the pink is just a little bit more poppy now that we've got this um and also because so little tip with lighting we've kind of talked about this before but um shading is rarely ever just add black right which is what i've done here i've just dropped the lightness down and it's just added black that's rarely ever a good way to do it um, all light is is color. White light is every color in the rainbow. That's why you get the rainbow to begin with. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and match the mood here and we're going to bring some blue into this shadow. So we're going to make it kind of like purple, right? Don't necessarily look at what I've done because this is just going on the green side of things. But because the, the, the scale here of the hue was red to begin with, the sliding it over goes back to the blue. So we're getting a little bit of that coolness in the shading. Um, and it just makes it so much more interesting and real than just add black. There's yep. just a little bit more kind of depth happening there. And it kind of matches with the pink of that. Like that pink is still kind of bleeding into the, the shading a little bit. It's making that kind of work with us a little bit more. Um, and then potentially what i can start thinking about doing is um i've got a little bit of a, a kind of a a warm light over here nice to maybe come in and get a darker tone on the other side and um, so we're going to grab this blue here and it's probably not going to work because blue and orange very kind of again complementary colors so uh, I'm not really loving it too much. It's okay, but I think probably the solution will be I've got to change the um, the overall color of right, the this base color yeah. character. Yeah, potentially, or um, come in with a more kind of like yellow color. So something that's going to feel more like a natural light color, or even like a slightly brighter kind of orange gold color in here and worked from that and that's that's a bit better that feels a little bit more like a a natural thing that's happening over there um and just kind of complementing that kind of framework a little bit better again i'm doing this really really roughly um just to kind of speed things up um, and so something that I can do then with this is come in with the thing that is actually creating that light source on the other side. So I've got my smoke layer. I'm going to potentially stick that behind my smoke layer. And just so that you can understand that's like, that's not just a random thing that's happening. There is a light source happening over there. Come in with a radial gradient and just do that and immediately oh, wow. you can be like okay cool yeah all right yeah. something's happening over there we don't know what it is but it's making this thing and yeah. it's obviously throwing more light on him than the pink is so it would make sense for the shading to be on the side of the pink even though there is a light on that side it's just a bounce light it's not going to 
going to do that much for us. Um, so yeah, so you can see immediately now we've got a pretty good sense of volume happening, pretty good yeah. sense of like what's happening, placement within the scene, um, uh, without even having done any detail to this character. Like we're not we're not getting into a lot of the colors on there. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done on there, but at least we know that the volumes are, are building properly. Um, and so what I still need to do now is get my ground layer and I'm gonna come in with a darker tone here and throw in a gradient happening over there just to kind of stay consistent to the light that's occurring from the other side. And that's also gonna allow me to say, um, I'm going to come in with this puddle here potentially and get my reflections happening. So uh, again, I'm, I'm really just kind of trying to build a sense of kind of what's happening in this universe and in this world very, very quickly without kind of getting too bogged down in how stuff needs to look. Yep. Um, so just, uh, we've only got about three minutes left, just letting you know. So, um, yeah, it's amazing when that, that yellow light source, just how much that added to it, like just incredible, yeah. like, and it adds atmosphere, together. it adds all this kind of stuff that's happening. Um, I could do the same thing with the smoke here. I could like smack on a, another kind of hue sap, um, to block this out, get some shading on those on that smoke and bring it in a little bit more to the darker tones there we go and fill that with black yep come in with white and then we're going to start to mess around with volumes in here that can kind of catch on to this and showcase kind of the overall uh, and i'm doing this the wrong way around there we go, that's better. That's going to be a bit easier to work from. Um, and getting again that kind of volume of the smoke. Um, coming in back onto our highlights. Getting that pink because that smoke is also going to be catching the pink light. And then on the other side, it's going to be catching some of those yellows. So this is probably like one of those things that you need to like look at at this scale to make right. sure that everything <laughs> makes sense because I'm doing this really roughly. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. It's just now it's just time and and making sure that everything is coherent, adding in some detail, yeah. um, making sure the story is being told. But um, yeah, we've, we've got kind of basic volumes down pat um, and everything is looking pretty good and we've made a million layers in the process. Um, but yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, we might leave it there just so we can have time to kind of kind of wrap up. Um, yep. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. I think, yeah, so many techniques in there and I, I really like the idea of um, and the distinction between using AI as um, reference as, a, um, as opposed to, why is it my brain broken? What was the other word we were using? Inspiration. Inspiration, thank you very much. Um, and I think that's a really important distinction and really good to think about it in the terms of how you want to work with AI art and the sort of artwork that you do and the level that you're at. And, you know, if it's, is it client work? Is it personal work? Is it practice? Is it, you know, all that sort of stuff is really important um, to talk about. So thank you for um, jumping on, Jeremy. And always, always a blast. I love this big boy. And I love the changes <laughs> that you've made um, to him. And um, yeah, as always, thanks for hanging out with us on Adobe Live. Uh, thanks for having me. A pleasure as always. All right. We'll, we'll have you back on again in the future. Um, and uh, uh, on Friday, we will have Johanna experimenting with some more AI um, stuff. So uh, join us for that. Thanks again, Jeremy and everyone out there. See you later next time on Adobe Live. See you.